Here are a few things you're probably overpaying for. Number 9. Cable. If you're trying to save money and be smarter with your money, one of the easiest things to do is get rid of cable. I'd say to just not watch TV in general, but hey, that's just me. If you really need shows in your life, however, you can easily just get a subscription to Netflix or Hulu. But somehow, a lot of people still choose to keep cable. If you're one of those people that have cable, make sure you're not overpaying for your subscription. The average basic cable package costs around $65 a month or a $780 per year. But that does not include taxes and all those weird fees they tack on. It's common for some families to buy packages that have anywhere from 130 to 300 plus channels included in their subscription. Research has shown that Americans only view an average of 17 channels despite the massive variety they have to choose from. The best way to avoid overpaying for cable is to choose the best subscription package for you and not the best package the cable company offers. And just watching TV to watch TV so you can get the max value of your cable bill just doesn't make sense either. Number eight, bottled water. The convenience of having a product that you can essentially get for free bottled for you has turned into a multi-billion dollar industry in the US. At an average cost of $1.22 per gallon, consumers are spending 300 times the cost of tap water to drink bottled water. But just how pure is that pristine bottled water in your shopping cart? As it turns out, the answer varies depending on the brand and on a confusing array of water terms. Artisan water isn't the same as spring water, for instance. The bottom line is that close to half of the bottled water sold in the United States is ordinary filtered tap water. The National Resources Defense Council completed a four-year-long study of over 100 brands of bottled water and found a few disturbing things, such as the case of pure glacier water having been pumped from a well near a hazardous waste site. Bottled water brands are fond of using images of snow-capped mountains and pine forests on their labels, even when the water in the bottle may really be from a tap in Pittsburgh. Or, as one investigator put it, the same stuff that fills up your toilet bowl. Just buy a water bottle and refill it. Number seven, brand name items. It happens quite a lot that you go into a store to buy something and you see the product you were looking for under two different brands. One is the premium brand while the other is the store brand. If you take a minute and do a quick comparison of the ingredients and the price, and you might realize that the brand name product isn't always the best choice, but is often the more expensive one for no real reason whatsoever. Brand phobia happens when we always prefer buying the branded product over the non-branded one, often out of fear that the non-brand product won't be good enough. Your headache isn't gonna know the difference between a brand name and a generic pain reliever as long as they have the same active ingredient in the same amount. So, instead of spending the extra money on brand name pharmaceuticals, Go for the generic brand and save a few bucks. Number six, HDMI cables. When people first started using HDMI cords to deliver digital signals to their TVs, the cables were another expensive thing to buy along with the TV. But as HDMI cables became widespread, you could find them at prices under $10. Now there's a wide range in price for HDMI cables from $10 all the way up to hundreds of dollars. There must be some small improvement for performance for the most expensive cables, right? In terms of picture quality, there's no difference, explains Jeff Park, senior technical manager for HDMI licensing LLC. It's digital, so it's all or nothing. So the short answer is no. He says, quote, whether you have a $100 cable or a $5 cable, if they meet the same specification requirements, there should be no difference. From a technical point of view, they are exactly the same. What people really pay for in expensive cables is just a bit more quality. That and some great looking materials that make the cable look expensive, but adds absolutely no value to performance. Case in point, Magnolia retails a 9.8 foot long HDMI cable for $459. If you need a new HDMI cable, there's absolutely no reason to buy the super high end HDMI cable. And expensive HDMI cables will give the same image and sound quality as expensive cables. Number five, textbooks. Textbooks have long been criticized for being grossly overpriced. The giant market for college textbooks largely comes from author royalties, editorial production, and marketing. Don't even get me started on the ROI of going to college itself. The students have to pick degrees that actually can make them money. Anyways, textbooks haven't always been so expensive. 
publishers and professors decided to come together and release new editions of a book every two or three years. Textbooks became less about educating and more about profitability. According to the College Board, the average student spends upwards of $1,200 per year on textbooks. If you're really trying to save some money, just buy old editions of the same textbook. Or, better yet, just go to the campus library and use the textbooks that's often available for free. Number four, extended warranty. If you've bought a home appliance, computer equipment, or a used car recently, you probably have been offered an extended warranty. In many cases, the salesperson probably pushed you hard to purchase it, outlining all of the benefits of the warranty. The question here is, are extended warranties a good value? The answer is a resounding no. These policies are a great deal for those that offer them, but they're a terrible deal for the customer. There are several reasons why. Most often, you may be purchasing insurance you already have, as most products will carry some type of manufacturer's warranty for at least a year. Another big reason is that, well, insurance is a losing proposition. It has to be. Insurance companies aren't in the business of losing money. They can do this only because, on average, you'll pay them more than they will pay you. Insurance companies that issue these policies also factor in breakage. That is, many people who suffer a covered loss won't file a claim. They'll either forget that they bought the extended warranty or they won't be able to find the paperwork to prove they bought it. Number three, restaurants. Restaurants mark up the cost of food to turn a profit, of course, but some foods have way bigger markups than others. Soda from the fountain sells for 20 to 40 times the restaurant's cost and eight times more than when it's served in a can. A cup of tea is a nice sit-down restaurant goes for 225 to 325, whereas the tea bag costs no more than 35 cents. When it comes to pasta, it's impossible to assign an exact dollar figure because the market depends on what it's topped with. But if you exclude pasta dishes with seafood or red meat, you can probably figure that the bowl of pasta costs the restaurants around a couple of bucks. And most restaurants sell their pasta dishes for six to ten times the cost. Eggs often come with a hefty markup as well. The profit margin for a scrambled egg is about 80%. As far as cheese goes, restaurants pay on average 29 cents per slice of cheese, but offer to add cheese to burgers for a buck 50 on average, a 417% markup. If you're really trying to stick it to a restaurant, order a steak such as a ribeye or filet. Sometimes restaurants sell it for a loss just because they pretty much have to have it on the menu. Do you know what's usually the worst thing to order at a restaurant? The special of the day. Typically, it's something that's about to go bad or something the restaurant got for a great deal. If you're going to eat out, at least choose something that you can't easily make at home or choose to get the max value out of the experience. Number two, wine. You would think that the more money you spend on a bottle of wine, the money you spend would proportionately go to the actual winemaking process. But it just doesn't work out that way. Where exactly does the money go? For a $100 bottle of wine, around $25 to $40 of the bottle really goes to what you can actually taste. Let's just go through a quick example. A winery sells their $25 bottle of Cabernet to a wholesaler or distributor for $45 per bottle. Well, that distributor or wholesaler needs to make money as well. The distributor charges the retailer $65. The retailer tacks on the de facto 50% margin. The wine is now listed at almost 100 bucks on the store shelf. When picking a bottle of wine, bear in mind that there are two things related to quality. First on the list are the things you can taste. Here, think about the grapes, the oak barrel, the winemaking process, and the things you can't taste but still pay plenty of money for, the marketing, the bottles, the corks, the labels, etc. The cheap wines, something under 10 bucks a bottle, put a good percentage of that $10 in making the bottle look good. For more expensive wines, $100 or more, the biggest percentage of the 100 bucks in the marketing of the wine. Yes, ultimately it's better wine, but you're not getting the best bang for your buck. It turns out that you can get the best value for your money by buying a wine in the mid-price range for somewhere around 20 bucks for a bottle of wine. Number one, newest consumer electronics. The newest consumer electronics that comes out is one of the worst things people overpay for. One obvious reason is the fact that these products depreciate fast. Such products face the double whammy of wider availability as competitors jump on every bandwagon and constant innovation, which knocks prices lower. The longer a product is on the market and the more available it becomes, the lower its price becomes. In terms of innovation, the drawback of nearly all electronics is that whatever you buy, whenever you buy it, a newer, more high-tech product will be on the market within weeks or months for cheaper. Take 3D TVs, for example. In July 2010, 
the average 47-inch to 50-inch 3D TV sold for a little more than $900. A year later, the same TV sold for about $400. This is why Sony had lost money on its television division for eight straight years. Buying used, or perhaps buying the previous year's closeout model, is the smartest way to go. You're not going to feel the slight difference in improvement in technology, but you'll definitely feel that extra money you save. Here's what's next. It's just because of how awesome the effects look. But if things fell one way instead of another, who knows? Maybe the world today will be getting electricity completely differently. Tesla was backed with 150 grand, which is around $4 million in today's money by one of the greatest bankers of our time, JP Morgan.